very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on The Big Story tonight. I'm Yvonne Okwara Matole. Tonight, members of parliament are having a field day. They will not have their salaries cut as proposed in a Gazette notice by the Salaries and Remuneration Commission last year. According to a memo by the clerk of the National Assembly, Michael Cialai, MPs will get their backdated car maintenance and mileage allowances, bringing their January salaries to at least 1.4 million shillings each. The return of the hefty perks comes in the wake of a court case filed by the Parliamentary Service Commission seeking to quash the SRC Gazette notice that slashed MPs allowances. The case was mentioned today before the High Court Judge George Odunga. The return of the perks comes also just days after a Jubilee parliamentary group meeting at State House that was also attended by the Speaker, Justin Muturi, the clerk himself of the National Assembly. Now, it's interesting to note that all state officers were in fact affected by the Pay Cut Gazette in July last year, but it is only the Parliamentary Service Commission that moved to court to challenge it. This is despite national outcry over a bloated wage bill that takes away 52% of national revenue. Well, barely a month after the SRC proposition, here's what President Kenyatta had to say, vowing to support the pay cut for the honorable members. I fully support the recommendations of Sarah Sarem that have cut the salaries of all public officers from the president all the way down. I ask these honorable, if they require to be called honorable members, to respect that. That is the focus of the show tonight. And I will be speaking to members of National Assembly, Milio Diambo of Mbita. Also, Dan Manzo from Makweni will be joining us. And we'll be getting some economic perspective from Ken Gishinga, who is the chief economist at Mentoria Consulting. But before we hear from them... Let's, as always, get some perspective and understanding of why this is a big story today from our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna, who is in the Central Business District here in Nairobi at our city center studios. Sophia, good evening. We have a lot to get into with this one. Uh, uh, but first, let's understand what happened today in court. Like we've told our viewers, the matter came up before Justice Odunga. Good evening, Yvonne. Yes, the matter came up before the High Court. Justice Odunga having a mention of this matter and uh, hearing from parties that would want to be enjoined in this suit. Remember, it was last year in December that Justice Odunga issued a stay order on that SRC Gazette notice that had a wide array of changes in as far as the pay to uh, the MPs, the senators, as well as their allowances. So today, you had um, uh, the likes of Akio Mtata, who's an activist. He's seeking to be enjoined in this matter. And his application for joinder, Yvonne Okio Mtata, argues that Judge uh, Justice Odunga erred in his decision on the 17th of December in putting in place this stay order in that he prejudiced an initial judgment that was made in 2014 that found at the time when Okio Mtata had moved uh, to court against the Attorney General and four other parties. In that three-judge bench, the judges ruled that the National Assembly, uh, which had at the time, following another Gazette notice uh, from the SRC, impacting and affecting their pay, uh, the National Assembly at the time nullified that Gazette notice to continue to enjoy their perks. However, when the matter was moved to court, justice, uh, the three judges who sat in that particular matter in 2014 found that it was unconstitutional, it contravened and went against their mandate, the extent extended that in making those changes, in nullifying that Gazette notice. So in this particular joint application by Okio Tata, he argues that there are important aspects to this case uh, that he needs to bring in owing to the background he has had uh, with this matter. Another party, Yvonne, that is seeking to be enjoined in this petition is former Makadara Member of Parliament, Honorable Mutura. And he, in 2015, wrote to the SRC, and at the time 
Yvonne, the bone of contention, the issue he was bringing to the attention of the Salaries Commission is around what he called exorbitant, outrageous um, allowances. And this is when you're talking about the mileage reimbursements. Because Yvonne, at the time, what would happen is that each member of parliament had indicated they travel every so often, in fact, every weekend to their various constituencies. And so every end of the week, 600,000 they would get reimbursed by uh, Parliament. And this, of course, coming up to 2.4 million shillings a month. And what this mem former member of Parliament described as outrageous and as far as this uh, parks were concerned is that even when members uh, did not travel to their constituencies, they still sought to be reimbursed. Even when they were on recess, they still wanted uh, to get uh, this money. And remember, this was on top of the 5 million car grant that as well they were getting for the Term. So these are just two of the members arguing they will bring perspectives that will inform uh, this matter as it goes uh, to full hearing. Because remember, this stay order was given by Justice Odunga pending full hearing. So all these issues are going to be coming up. And for the Parliamentary Select Committee, or rather Service Committee, their biggest concern is around the car grants and the mileage reimbursements. And as you rightfully mentioned, right now, with a stay order in place, it's a field day for the members in both houses. What I understand is going on is they're filling out those forms real fast to ensure their grants come in. Uh, not sure how this matter will proceed because it might go against them when it finally is heard and there is a judgment rendered. LSK, Yvonne, as well, is seeking to be enjoined in this matter and two other parties. Uh, Justice Odunga will be giving directions on who will be allowed to participate in this petition on the 31st. Uh, of this month. Hearing was to begin on the 29th. However, that will not be the case. Yvonne. Uh, so uh, let's talk about this issue of the wage bill that um, President Uhuru Kenyatta has focused on since 2013 when he first came into office. Many Kenyans will remember there was a wage bill conference with the SRC going around the country, gathering views of the pub members of the public. Just talk to us a little bit about uh, why this has been an issue for five years now. It has been an issue for five years, Yvonne, and unfortunately, despite the president himself, you know, standing out uh, during the State of the Nation address last year, he painted a grim picture of a country drowning in a wage bill she cannot continue to sustain holding up for any longer. That in the sense, also, as you put it in your intro, 50% of our revenue as a country is going to just 2% of the public servants, so that the MPs and the senators and all of these other public uh, officers are getting half of our revenue, so that you, Yvonne, myself, our viewers, and all Kenyans are left with 50% to be able to get our public service delivery, development, and perhaps that speaks to why we are seeing also a huge uh, burden in as far as the debt is concerned, because then with all of this money going to pay salaries, then you have very little left uh, to continue advancing the country. So last year we heard the president talk about that, and more recently, as the presidential election petition following the 8th of August election, we were awaiting judgment on that. Uh, President Kenyatta, while addressing a forum uh, organized by the Ministry of Education, uh, commented on then a push by some of the legislators uh, following that SRC Gazette notice, and they were saying they will not allow uh, for it to stand. They'll not allow for their perks to be deducted. And then uh, not happy President Kenyatta swore, in fact, his words were that I swear if, in fact, my win is upheld, I'll ensure that does not happen. And one of the uh, most infamous figures we remember for that push was uh, Mudoni Wamushoba, who is a woman rep uh, Kiambu County, and talking about how she needed and required to be remunerated honorably as her position dictated. And so you've seen a president speak about this. However, his critics would argue he's the president. He has majority in both houses of parliament. He can whip them because at the end of the day, as you said, it is the parliamentarians, the lawmakers that have moved to court to ensure that what SRC put in place is reversed or does not take place. So is there more the president could do? Many would argue there is. Yvonne. Yes. So there was also some interesting um, additions when this matter came up for debate last year, right? I mean, we heard of some interesting um, 
demands, so to speak, from the members of National Assembly beyond mileage and a car grant? Yes, beyond mileage, you're having 2.4, and then you have that car grant. And in fact, one of their proposals to revise that was that then don't give us the car grant of 5 million, give us 120,000 a month. But if you calculate that for an entire five-year term, you'll end up paying these lawmakers 7 million, which is a bigger uh, and larger amount with the 5 million that was standing. However, one of the proposals they have had that some have argued are outrageous is uh, to have uh, two wives covered and more than five children in as far as the allowances they get so that there is a wife and for some they said girlfriend or whoever, uh, whichever other women they would choose uh, to enlist. And this really you'd imagine and some analysts have argued how is the country not outraged at some of these proposals that are made. But you'll see the likes of the Speaker of the National Assembly, Justin Muturi, he came out to defend the legislators, arguing that, for instance, in the case uh, of the car grants, why was it that SRC was seeking to scrap that for the members of parliament and not that for PSs, CSs, even judges, and saying that it was even worse so in their cases because not only were they getting the car grants, they also had official vehicles. So this has been one of those back and forth. The lawmakers argue they are uh, also affected by the high cost of rising, that the vagaries of life and the economy are being felt by them as well, and therefore unfair uh, treatment should not uh, be uh, uh, seen to be put against them. So we now know SRC, of course, we had invited them for the show tonight, but saying because of this matter, that is before court, they do not wish to comment on it. But however, Yvonne, they are saying if the court is to find against them, not in their favor in this matter, they will find their mandate untenable because then if whatever measures they have worked on for so long to ensure there's rationalization, because with that Gazette notice, SRC argued they would save the country 8 billion shillings annually. And so if all of those gains are reversed, they argue their place in society and as far as their mandate uh, may not be tenable. However, if they lose in this round, they are determined to appeal. Yvonne. Yes, interesting. And thanks, Sophia, for reminding us about uh, what the president swore to do should his election be, re, um, be upheld. He swore that this is something that he would ensure took place. So, of course, all eyes will be on the president even after the court matter is done. Thank you so much, Sophia, for uh, bringing us perspective on this issue. This is definitely something that has been going on for a while. Um, she has painted uh, the picture of the numbers, what, what is there. And we'd also like to hear your views, and hopefully we'll have them showing on our screens in just a moment. Quite uh, a bit of uh, feedback on this big story tonight, Peter Oteng. Uh, saying, I think I don't support the directive by Sarah Serem on chopping legislators' allowances. It's through those allowances that they can help their people and do some personal projects that impact lives directly. And then there's uh, many others who do not agree. Um, the Oan, I think, uh, is how you pronounce your name. And Paul Wanjiko, the tax-paying employer of the MPs, have no say when the employee MPs decide to raise their pay. Isn't it about time? that one inch itself approve a reduction in their tax rates, including VAT. What are your thoughts? Uh, the hashtag is the big story at Sophia Wanuna, at Yvonne Okwara and at KTN News. Let's now talk a little bit more about this with uh, two members of parliament that we have with us. That is Dan Manzo uh, and Milio Diambo. I thank you both legislators as well as Ken Gishinga, who's a senior economist, all joining us for this discussion. Uh, Honorable Milio, I'd like to begin with you. What is your personal position um, on this issue? Are you um, a happy member of uh, parliament tonight? Why would I not be a happy member of parliament? I, I don't see what has happened to make me not happy. Tell us why. Perhaps you could uh, bring me to speed. Perhaps you could bring <laughs> me to speed as to why I shouldn't be happy. Well, um, indeed, uh, you would be very happy with the over 600,000 shillings that would be coming into your account today. But tell me this then. Um, a number of other state officers were affected uh, by per this. Perhaps, maybe, maybe before, 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 before you get into that, that's why I'm telling you I would love to know why I wouldn't be happy. <laughs> you can tell First, us. I think we need to get, I think we need, I think we need to get our record straight. 
correct? Please do. Uh, there is no 600,000. There is no 600,000 coming into our account. Uh -huh. Even though I'd be very, very happy if such an amount would come into my account, because I do not shy away, away from stating my opinion. What is and your my opinion? View that I am, my opinion is that I am a servant of the people of Mbita constituency, now known as Suba North constituency. I am a mere conduit for people of Suba North constituency. And whatever I receive, I receive for the people of Suba North constituency. And I cannot, even for one second, be embarrassed to receive money to support my people, the Mbita constituency. Perhaps what I can say is to bring this issue to an end, is it would be very nice if we did a referendum constituency by constituency. I talk to Mbita people, and they have no problem with me continuing to represent them effectively by being able to attend Mbita. Today, I was able to communicate um, uh, with our roads officer to ask how, what is the distance to the farthest part of Mbita. And they were giving me things in nautical miles. I, I can't translate it even in kilometers. So let's, let's be realistic. Let's stop being hypocritical. OK. Uh, Dan Manzo, what are your thoughts on this issue, particularly because uh, it is only the Parliamentary uh, Service Commission that took this issue to court, um, yet this Gazette notice affected the presidency, it affected cabinet secretaries, uh, and uh, PSs as well, principal secretaries. But why do parliamentarians feel especially aggrieved by that Gazette notice of July 2017? Well, first and foremost, this matter is before court, and uh, you know, it will be some judice to go to the merits of the matter. Uh, the only thing I know is that uh, um, the SRC should have followed the law, and that's why we have a law in this country. But when they, they take decisions without following the law, then, of course, the courts are likely to correct those decisions. And I believe uh, uh, in the rule of law. But uh, what happened was uh, a matter and a case in whereby the law was not followed at all. Uh, this is the only country uh, people's earnings are reduced. Uh, we do appreciate the reasons which are given by the president. But the challenge is that the country should be generating income. We've got a lot of protests. Uh, we've got a lot of projects in the country, such as the oil industry, which we have not yet exploited, and this will really make um, the economy much better and will support even more people. Uh, it doesn't matter whether a member of parliament has uh, 600,000 shillings or not. Whatever a member of parliament has it just goes to his people, whether he likes it or not. So whether you have the money or you don't have for every day, it is just the same. And uh, we're just there to serve people. I'm there to serve the people of Makueni. Uh, what what uh, Parliament and the Parliamentary Service Commission is doing is merely facilitate me to be able to, to do that sort of job. Uh, but I think uh, the government was not very honest with what it was trying to do. Uh, I would have encouraged uh, Uru Kenyatta to work harder at the generating income for the country. We've got a lot of uh, opportunities. We've got a lot of uh, uh, minerals which you can exploit and the economy will expand. And in fact, Kenyans will not be taxed. There are many other countries in the world where their economies are doing well, such as Botswana, uh -huh. because they have exploited their natural resources. So All let's right. take the challenge, exploit the natural resources, and appreciate the good work members of parliament are doing for their people. Okay. We just come from an election, and Kenyans are happy to elect their leaders. All right. Uh, uh, Manzo, but let me ask you this, because you say Kenya should be generating more money, and, and perhaps rightfully so, have a lot of resources and a lot of um, plans that are being put in place to increase our GDP, to increase uh, the country's revenues. But yet we are not there yet. In fact, Sarah Serem um, recommended payment of a fixed salary structure guided by performance of the economy. Like you say, we should be doing better than we are, but we're not. Um, is, is it something that both you and, and Millie might agree that um, definitely we need to be making more money, but we're not? Do you think the wage bill in the country is a problem? The reason we are not making money is because of disorganization and failing to, to utilize properly what we have, and also uh, corruption, which is running in government departments, and I'm very sure the president and his deputy are very much aware of this. Uh, you, you, you know, if we exploited our call, which is in the massive amounts in Kitui, 
we will be able to, you know, to sell this coal and uh, make money for the country. You know, we have the oil reserves. Uh, oil reserves will, will increase the budget, or, or whatever we budget, uh, uh, 40 times, meaning, you know, you know, we'll have like 40 trillion. Uh, other than the one or two trillion shillings we budget on, uh, on a budget which is never followed. All right, let me ask, let, um, let me ask this. Do you think uh, the country's wage bill is, is of concern at this point? It's all about leadership, you know, and the plans the government have and uh, whether they want to achieve and uh, the, the, the goodwill, you know, from other nations uh, and the partners who can help us exploit oil. We've got a lot of oil right, right. in Kenya. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. And that is because I do not think you're answering my question. Do you think the country's wage bill is um, at a critical level in this country? Yes or no? Uh, pardon me, I didn't hear you well. Do you think the, the wage sound. bill... Do you think the wage bill in this problem is a cause for concern? I don't think so. Okay. Why not? Well, as, as I've just said, you know, you, we have to grow the economy in one way or another. We cannot keep on, uh, uh, you, you know, reducing everybody's salary, including teachers and every, everyone. We have to grow the economy so that the country has, okay. a, a, has an opportunity uh, right. to be able to grow. Because it, what, what the government is telling us is that we are, we are, we are retrogressive. We are, we, are, we are not making any progress at all. And the current leadership knows so. Okay, let me speak to Ken Gishinga for a moment, who's uh, an economist tonight. Um, Ken, what do you make of the wage bill in the country? Uh, best international practice says it should be at around 30 to 35 percent. You probably know the figures better than me to allow for development. Um, do you think the wage bill is an issue of concern and that we need to make cutbacks in certain areas? Absolutely, absolutely. I think this is a very serious issue. Um, if you look at the last five years, for example, we've spent quite a lot on salaries. And the big question right now is, can we get the conversation right? Because there's nobody who is challenging that an MP should get a salary increment. Any good employer has to give a salary increment because, as you say, the cost of living um, in Kenya is going up. I think what is causing a public outcry right now is the timing and the process in which these um, salary increments are being uh, implemented. This is a time after a very difficult election year. 2017 was one of the most difficult um, economic years in this country's history. Um, businesses were very, uh, did very, very poorly. Um, if you read the newspapers, any newspaper today, we're just seeing homes and cars being auctioned. So I think the public outcry is being generated from the feeling that uh, could it be that our parliamentarians are a bit out of touch with the reality? Yes, this is a, an economy that can produce a lot more revenue. Yes, this is an economy that can do well. But the thinking behind the Sarah Serem um, policy was everything needs to be done in a very, very procedural step. Because if you spend 52% of your national revenue on salaries, when are you going to have time to build schools? When are you going to have time to build hospitals? When are you going to have time to build roads? So I think it's a question of timing. It's a question of process. And really looking at uh, global best standards. You know, if you look at a congressman in the United States or a parliamentarian in the United Kingdom, it's only in Kenya where the public sector earns much more than the private sector, which is absurd. So I think it's time we really have a very honest conversation. And I understand the parliamentarians when they say that um, they have to go back to their people with something. But I think also we have to ask, what is the role of an MP? And an MP really is a legislative office. It's about creating laws that enable the country well. All these other revenue leakages to the public, all these things are not really recognized in the Constitution. A parliamentarian is somebody who makes laws. So that process should not be so much so that it's training on the rest of the economy. To take a short break, but I'd like to give you a chance uh, to weigh in uh, before we take a small commercial break. Uh, Millie, can you hear me? Millie Othiambo, can you hear me? Yes, I, yes um, I've listened to Ken. And uh, what I would like to say is that 
I would want to agree with him that I'm out, out of touch of, with the realities of Nairobi. I am not out of touch with the realities of Mbita. And uh, I know about women who get sick, who have problems delivering. I know about people who have lost their last one. Uh, somebody just called me from a place called Godiario, this, uh, as I'm coming here, who lost his son in a motorbike accident. I know about people who are collecting money from my, in my constituency for people who are sick, for people who are being buried tomorrow. So I'm in touch with my reality, which is in bitter constituency. I don't have to be in touch with the reality of Nairobi. And I can tell you the reality in bitter constituency is that I need to respond to their issues. But above all, I want to say that we also need to be realistic about the conversation and be truthful about the conversation. There is no salary of MP that is being added. Nobody is adding any MP, any salary. What they are doing is that the uh, Sarah Serem stopped uh, 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 mileage that was being given to MPs to mileage that was allowing MPs to reach their constituencies. And the, uh, the, the, the PSC went to court. And when the PSC went to court, the court um, gave a ruling that the status quo be maintained, which essentially means that the payment can continue until final determination of the court. Okay. So there's nothing illegal going on. No salaries have been added, not in this parliament, not in the last parliament. Yes, no salaries indeed. have been added. Indeed, and I think that is very clear that the SRC had stopped um, a set of allowances. But let's take a small commercial break. When we come back, more with my guest tonight, two honorable members of parliament, one economist and your views. Um, Mukami Purity says, I've not received much from the MP salary because they don't use their salaries to make roads or build schools. That and much more of your feedback coming up on The Big Story tonight.